Stack memory. What is it? Why do we need it? And how do you make it in Minecraft? These questions and more will be answered in this video. I'm CT5K. Join me as we create a computer stack using HexGen Redstone. So what exactly is a stack? Simply put, a stack is an implementation of Philo logic. Now you might be asking, what is Philo logic? Great question. Philo stands for first in, last out. We all know the concept of its counterpart, FIFO, which stands for first in, first out. The first person to get in line is the first person to get out of line. The last person to get in line is the last person to get out of line. In computer terms, we call this a queue. A stack is kind of like the opposite of a queue. Think of a stack as books laying on a table. If you want to add a book to the pile, you would place it on top of the stack. This is called pushing onto the stack. If you want to read some data from the stack, you would remove the top book off the stack and then read what's in the book. This is known as popping off the stack. This is the backbone behind the stack. We have an array of values in memory. When a new value is added to the stack, it takes the first spot and pushes every other value down by one. When the top item is removed, the other values are popped up one position. So why is a stack necessary? What is so great about it that we should construct it? The key necessity for a stack is when you want to call functions within your main program. Let's say we have our main program. In that program, we call a second subfunction. While that function runs, what do we do with the variables in our main program? Nowadays, our compilers and operating systems automatically take care of memory management. But in Minecraft, we are working down at the hardware level. The number of registers the processor can access are extremely limited. So we have to move the contents from the registers to another block of memory. Long story short, this can get really messy and really dangerous very quickly. If we implement the use of a stack, our problem becomes trivial. Before we call our subfunction, let's push our current values onto the stack. Then the subfunction can access all of the registers without having to worry about overwriting an important value. After the subfunction executes, we can then pop our main values off the stack and it is as if they never left. Using a stack also allows subfunctions inside of subfunctions, since the Philo logic will always work at itself out from the deepest layer to our main function. Knowing this, I began making a stack inside of Minecraft. Here is my first prototype. So here's a prototype for a hex stack. Now this is five deep, so we can store up to five numbers on this stack and it's hex making this 16 bit for four hex digits. So now I'm just going to pop this. This will put it into that first cell. And then let me just change this to like one, two, three, and four. Now let me push that back. Now, as you can see, we have one, two, three, and four in the first cell, and then one, 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 one in the second cell. Now, let's say I don't want to have anything, but instead just want to put a bunch of zeros. Well, we can do that. And as you can see, this is now zero, this was now one, two, three, four, and this is just one, 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 one. So we have two, four, six, eight, eight, six, seven, five, zero, 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 zero. One, two, three, four, and one, 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 one. Now, if we were to pop this, you can see eight, six, seven, five, zero, 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 one, two, three, four, and one, 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 one. And lastly, if we pop that out, everything in the stack has been popped out, leaving the entire stack. Now, a keen eye can see that the design I built is flawed. And the reason of that is because of time complexity. In CSCE, time complexity is the average amount of time it takes for a process to complete. Time complexity is represented in big O notation. The stack you see here has a time complexity of O in, which means that the average time it takes depends on the number of cells in the stack. This is really bad because adding a cell to the stack by default causes it to slow down. If a stack takes 12 seconds to push with 12 cells, it takes 1 million seconds to push with 1 million cells. What we would prefer is O1, which is constant time. We want our stack to take a specific amount of time, no matter how many cells it has. So if the stack takes 12 seconds to push with 12 cells, it still takes 12 seconds to push with 1 million cells. Given some properties of Minecraft Bedrock, I was having problems modifying my design to go from O in to O1. Then late one night, everything clicked, and I realized I was looking at this the wrong way. 
In one of my programming classes, we had to create a stack using C++. I realized that I could create a stack on the hardware level using the same concepts as I did in class. Our stack will still work the same, but will have the precious O1 complexity that we desire. So here's how to build a stack using Minecraft Redstone. Instead of having an array that we move back and forth, let's look at the stack as a block of generic memory. It could be in RAM or a block dedicated to be a stack. Outside of the memory block, we have a single memory cell. This we are going to call the stack pointer. To push onto the stack, we will write our value in the memory block at the address the stack pointer holds. We will then increment the stack pointer by one. We can repeat this as many times as we want to fill up our stack. Now how are we going to pop off the stack? To pop, we are going to decrement the stack pointer by one. We are then going to output the value at the stack pointer address. This simulates the shifting discussed earlier, but doesn't actually move any data around. Thus, the time it takes to push or pop doesn't depend on the size of our memory block, giving us a time complexity of 01. Using this approach, here is the stack I was able to create. This is a 32 byte stack, so this is 16 cells of four bytes each. So if I come over here and give it a set of values, I can push it onto the stack and it fills this first cell right here. I can then change these values and then push it again and it pushes onto the next stack cell. Then to pop, you can simply press the button and it outputs the previous cell onto the output. Now if you look right here, this hasn't been overwritten, but the stack pointer has been decremented. So if I were to come back over here and change our inputs, and then when I re-push, you can see that this cell has been overwritten and this one has not been touched. And despite how big and clunky this looks, this is actually really fast. It takes about one second to go from the input to one of these devices, and again, about one second to go from one of the memory cells to the output. In fact, the slowest portion of this device is the decoder I used, just because I wanted to be quick and easy instead of fast and optimized. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is the definition, necessity, and architecture for building a computer stack. I will be leaving this as a world download in the description below. If you want to learn more about computer engineering and redstone hexadecimal, it only takes oh one time to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you never miss an upload. If you want to get plugged in to a community of other redstone engineers, then join my Discord server in the description below. That's all for this video, I'm CT5K, and I'll see you in the next one.